Japan has become the fifth country to land on the moon after a craft uh, dubbed Moon Sniper touched down on the lunar surface, but the uncrewed vessel has a technical fault, which means it may soon run out of power. In a revelation that has left the world in shock, Japan has unveiled a groundbreaking lunar discovery that was previously wrapped in mystery. This revelation challenges everything we thought we knew about the moon, and it has raised more questions than answers. What other secrets have we not uncovered about the moon? How much will this discovery reshape our understanding of the cosmos? Join us in uncovering Japan's terrifying discovery on the moon. The first moon expedition. In a bid to better understand the world and the cosmos, humans began to explore their surroundings and the Earth to make sense of their surroundings. The moon was not left out of this sense of exploration. The United States launched the first space expedition to the moon. Apollo 11, led by Commander Neil Armstrong and lunar module pilot Buzz Aldrin, became the first humans to walk the moon's surface. On July 20, 1969, at exactly 2017 UTC, Apollo 11 landed on the moon. Armstrong and Aldrin spent about two and a quarter hours exploring the site they had named the Tranquility Base. They collected about 47.5 pounds and about 21.5 kilograms of lunar material to bring back to the Earth. Armstrong's first steps on the moon were broadcast to a live worldwide audience. This was a groundbreaking moment in history for mankind, our first interaction with a celestial body. No wonder Armstrong described the event as one small step for a man, one huge leap for mankind. Now, man realized that he could interact with and explore bodies in outer space. This opened doors for more outer space travel. Aside from the United States, other countries to have explored the moon include India, China, and Russia. Japan is the most recent country to join this exclusive list. On the 19th of January, 2024, Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency experienced major exhilaration as their spacecraft, SLIM, landed on the moon. SLIM, short for Smart Lander for Investigating the Moon, is a demonstrator spacecraft designed to showcase the technology needed to make super-precise planetary landings. It launched last September, along with an X-ray space telescope called XRISM, which settled into low Earth orbit. SLIM reached lunar orbit on Christmas Day, then made its historic descent to the lunar surface on the 19th of January. Things did not go entirely to plan that day, however. SLIM's handlers could not confirm its status immediately after touchdown and eventually determined that its solar panels were not generating electricity. The newly released photo shows why that may have been. SLIM came to rest on its head, which was not the desired orientation. So, the lander was not able to harvest sunlight as expected. This predicament sparked a myriad of possibilities, leaving the ground crew puzzled. Remarkably, SLIM maintained communication with the team on Earth, running on battery power. This fueled the confidence that the lander had not suffered any critical damage during its touchdown. As SLIM continued its mission without direct power from its solar panels, the Japanese team embarked on a journey to troubleshoot the unforeseen issue. The mystery of SLIM's power failure remains a troubling puzzle, raising more questions about lunar exploration and the resilience of modern space technology. What mysteries lie behind the malfunctioning solar panels? And how will Japan's space experts navigate this lunar conundrum to unveil the secrets hidden within our celestial neighbors? The sage continues to unfold as scientists work tirelessly to decode the reason why SLIM's unexpected power outage. Despite knowing that SLIM could not sustain power for the full 14-day Luna journey as initially planned, the JAXA team did not let that dampen their spirits. Instead, they dove into conducting as many lander science experiments as possible before, conserving the last bit of battery power. This cautious approach aimed to preserve reserves in case the sun's rays from a different angle, namely, the western side could rejuvenate SLIM's solar panels toward the end of the lunar day. It was roughly 1 a.m. on January 22nd when SLIM embarked on its meticulous journey to the moon. The journey was a symphony of precision with SLIM, utilizing its finely tuned radar and smart navigation systems to hit a landing target within a mere 100-meter margin. 
Along the way, it deployed two experimental rovers and maximized the use of its onboard science equipment. As Slim neared the end of its lunar adventure, the JAXA team made strategic decisions. They gracefully shut off its battery, marking the end of its powered mission. Despite the equipment glitch on the lunar surface, JAXA has used this landing as a resounding success. The importance of Japan's moon travel echoes beyond the technical hiccup, emphasizing the significance of scientific achievement and paving the way for future lunar explorations. The same way Apollo 11 paved the way for lunar exploration around the world. Yes, Japan's journey to the moon might have come with a few unexpected bumps on the road, but the exploration means something bigger. This exploration has become the latest manifestation of mankind's collective genius and our unyielding curiosity about our world and the cosmos at large. Japan showcased an unparalleled feat in space exploration, a precise and successful soft landing on the moon. Achieving this delicate maneuver has proven difficult, even for the most advanced space agencies throughout the modern space age. There have been many attempts to touch down on the lunar surface, but have not gone according to plan. Interestingly, in the 21st century, China is the only country to have repeated successful lunar landings, but they are not part of any collaborative efforts. Japan, on the other hand, has been a steadfast partner with NASA, and their recent triumph in lunar landing technology introduces a potential game-changer. The innovative Japanese guidance holds promise as a significant asset for the future of the EMU, Extravehicular Mobility Unit, program. NASA uses EMU as a garment to protect astronauts from extreme space conditions. EMU is designed to supply the user's necessities, such as oxygen, ventilation, and in-suit drink bags, while in space. Yet amidst these victories lies a dark cloud over SLIM. Despite the significance of Japan's success, the current focus is on unraveling the mystery surrounding SLIM's unexpected behavior. What transpired during its mission, and what unforeseen challenges did SLIM face? The scientific community is in collaboration to decode the intricacies of SLIM's journey. The implications stretch far beyond national boundaries. The pursuit of knowledge, the purpose of uncovering mysteries about celestial bodies, continues to capture the world's imagination. Japan's recent success and the EMU program serve as beacons of hope for future celestial endeavors. So, the quest to uncover answers to SLIM's mystery not only fuels scientific curiosity, but also underscores the inherent challenges and triumphs that accompany mankind's journey into the vast outer space expanse. SLIM, a marvel of engineering precision and innovation, crafted with meticulous attention, its design was aimed at achieving a soft touchdown. It also featured 3D-printed aluminum lattice zones in its legs to absorb impact and ensure a gentle landing, even at high speed. Propelled by two main engines from Mitsubishi and equipped with 12 altitude control thrusters, SLIM embarked on a four-month journey meticulously planned to conserve fuel. However, it took a different turn upon touchdown. The chosen landing spot, the side of a crater on a 15-degree slope, was strategically selected to optimize sun exposure for the vehicle's solar panels to accommodate this slope. The rear legs were crafted shorter, and the navigation was programmed to delicately flip the vehicle about 45 degrees upon landing, ensuring a gentle descent on the longer legs. Yet, amidst all these well-laid plans, something still went wrong. Slim found itself facing westward, raising questions about the accuracy of its landing. The challenge lies in the unknown, as telemetry data takes time to analyze fully. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, acknowledges that SLIM's panel aces westward and that the vehicle functioned optimally until the battery power dwindled. The quest for answers hinges on satellite imagery, perhaps images from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, to unveil the specifics of SLIM's landing, whether it landed on its side or encountered other unforeseen challenges. Despite the setback with the solar panels, the mission in its entirety demonstrates a groundbreaking achievement. Precision landings of this caliber measured in meters rather than kilometers mark uncharted territory in lunar exploration. 
The disappointment in Slim's solar orientation emphasizes the complexities of venturing into the unknown, yet it emphasizes the pioneering spirit that keeps pushing us forward in unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos. This is a chapter of triumph for Japan's space exploration and a triumph for mankind as well. Slim's mission continues to stand as evidence of innovation and precision despite the unexpected solar setback. The mission achieved significant milestones including the successful gathering of navigation data useful for future lunar landers. Add this to the success of the two lunar excursion vehicles, LEV-1 and LEV-2, who emerged as stars in the space performance. The 2.1-kilogram lunar excursion vehicle, LEV, successfully conducted activities on the lunar surface, including executing planned leaping movements. LEV-1 achieved direct communication with ground stations, including an inter-robot test radio wave, data transmission from LEV-2. The baseball-sized 0.25-kilogram LEV-2 rover, nicknamed Sora-Q, was driven on the lunar surface and managed slim. JAXA noted in a statement that they are still analyzing other data, including driving logs, and that they plan to publish results in the future. LEV-2 was jointly developed by JAXA, Tomi, Sony, and Doshisha University. It is the smallest and lightest ever lunar rover, according to JAXA. It was developed by combining toy technology, the latest sensor robotics technology, and JAXA's space technology, and it has excellent autonomous operation and motion characteristics, according to JAXA Space Exploration Innovation Hub Director Kazuyuki Funaki. This success already marks a pivotal moment for Japan's space agency, as it continues to carve a larger niche on the world stage. Already a trusted partner of NASA and the European Space Agency since 2009, JAXA's contributions extend into the International Space Station, since their collaboration goes beyond Earth's orbit. Japan signed on in 2021 to aid in constructing modules for the Gateway Lunar Station, a project that aligns with their ongoing astronaut training for future crewed missions while fostering international partnerships. JAXA has diligently pursued its mission. SLIM is just a glimpse into their celestial endeavors. The Martian Moon Exploration spacecraft is being worked on and will be ready for launch in 2026. One of the two sample collection devices is the Planet Vac, a technology Planetary Society supporters helped enable by funding tests in 2013 and 2018. This trip aims to find out more about the two Martian moons, Phobos and Deimos. There are a lot of things we do not know about the Martian moons, Phobos and Deimos. They are small and lumpy, with Phobos just measuring 22 kilometers, about 14 miles across, and Deimos even more compact at 13 kilometers, about 8 miles wide. While Phobos and Deimos may be asteroids captured by Mars's gravity, their circular orbit suggests that they formed from debris knocked into space from Mars itself. In our solar system's early days, asteroids and comets bombarded the inner planets possibly bringing to Earth water and organics, the two key ingredients for life. Mars may have been similarly impacted, with the resulting orbital debris becoming rings that clumped into small moons. It is entirely possible that Mars gravity tore the innermost moon into rings again, and that Phobos is a product of an ongoing ring-moon cycle. Figuring out how Phobos and Deimos formed would give scientists another data point in determining what happened in the inner solar system before life arose on Earth. Japan's Martian Moons Exploration Missions, MMX, will survey the moons and bring back a sample of Phobos to the Earth. If the moons came from a giant impact on Mars, the resulting heat and energy should have removed most traces of water. If the moons are captured asteroids, they should have substantial water and organic materials like we find on similar small worlds. MMX is also a technology demonstration mission. Phobos will be one of the farthest worlds we've collected samples from, and MMX will have to travel deep within Mars's gravitational influence to collect them. Phobos itself has just enough gravity to require careful maneuvering to keep MMX from landing too hard, but not enough gravity to keep the spacecraft from bouncing if it doesn't absorb the impact properly. 
Studying Phobos using MMX's remote sensing instruments will tell us a lot, and the samples it returns to Earth will tell us even more. Despite impressive technology advances for robotic space missions, certain science questions can only be answered by tools that are too large, heavy, and power-hungry to fly on spacecraft. Furthermore, the samples are likely to contain diverse bits and pieces of Mars from across the planet, thrown into orbit by meteorites. How will MMX study the Martian moons? MMX will launch in 2026 and enter Mars orbit a year later. It will gradually get closer to Phobos, entering what mission planners call a quasi-orbit. While it may look like MMX is orbiting Phobos, it is just orbiting Mars in a way that lets it circle Phobos at the same time. This will be no easy challenge since Phobos is deep inside Mars's gravity well and just 6,000 kilometers above the surface, Earth's moon is more than 60 times further away. MMX will spend a year studying Phobos with its remote science instruments while searching for a safe and scientifically interesting place to land. A wide-angle camera and laser mapping system will map the moon in 3D, while a narrow-angle camera provides a closer look at specific areas. Three spectrometers, two of which are international contributions from the French space agency CNES and NASA, will determine the mineral and elemental makeup of Phobos's surface. A dust sensor will also look for orbiting particles knocked off Mars and Phobos by meteor impacts. The spacecraft also includes a pair of ultra-high-resolution video cameras from the Japanese Broadcasting Corporation that will provide stunning views of Mars and its moons. Some images will be transmitted to Earth during the mission, with the rest stored in the sample return capsule for later playback. As MMX descends to Phobos for landing, it will deploy a small German and French-built rover based on the mascot, which Hayabusa 2 dropped to tumble around asteroid Ryugu. The rover will travel around Phobos for at least 100 days, analyzing the surface. We don't know exactly what Phobos's surface is like. Is it rocky, fluffy, or sandy? MMX is prepared for a variety of possibilities with two sampling devices called C-Sampler and P-Sampler. C-Sampler is a robotic arm-mounted drill that can bore 10 centimeters beneath the surface. P-Sampler works by releasing pressurized gas to kick up surface materials, which travel through a tube into a collection container. P-Sampler is a derivative of Honeybee Robotics PlanetVac a planetary society-supported technology designed to simplify and lower the cost of sample collection. Our members and supporters funded PlanetVac tests in 2013 and 2018, demonstrating its readiness for use on future space missions. NASA is including the technology on a 2023 commercial moon flight and is contributing a P-sampler to Japan for the 2026 MMX mission. Once MMX collects its samples, it will lift off from Phobos and begin spiraling out of Martian orbit, passing Deimos several times on its way out to analyze and map the smaller moon. MMX will leave Mars in 2030 and return to Earth in 2031. The spacecraft will jettison a small capsule containing the samples, which will plummet through Earth's atmosphere and use a parachute to land safely for collection. In March of the preceding year, JAXA introduced the H-3 rocket, showcasing remarkable capabilities, with the only setback being the second stage failure to light on command. The H-3 launch vehicle is a Japanese expendable launch system. H-3 launch vehicles are launched from the Tanegashima Space Center in Japan, Mitsubishi. Heavy Industries and JAXA are responsible for the design, manufacture, and operation of the H-3. Despite the failure experienced, JAXA gears up for its next flight in mid-February, demonstrating resilience and determination in pushing the boundaries of space exploration. As Japan's cosmic ambitions unfold, it cements its place as a strong force in the quest for unraveling the mysteries of our celestial neighbors on the dynamic space frontier. The stage is also set for a monumental chapter as Blue Origin's huge new Glenn rocket is set to take center stage. Blue Origin began developing systems for orbital human spacecraft before 2012. A reusable first-stage booster was projected to fly a sub-orbital trajectory, 
taking off vertically like the booster stage of a conventional, multi-stage launch vehicle. Following stage separation, the upper stage would continue to propel astronauts to orbit, while the first stage booster would descend to perform a powered vertical landing similar to its New Shepard suborbital vehicle. The first stage booster was to be refueled and relaunched to reduce the costs of access for humans to space. The booster launch vehicle was projected to lift Blue Origin's iconic space vehicle capsule to orbit, carrying astronauts and supplies. After completing its mission in orbit, the space vehicle was designed to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and land under parachutes on land to be reused on future missions. Design work on the vehicle began in 2012 with the beginning of BE-4 engine development. Further plans for an orbital launch vehicle were made public in 2015. By March 2016, the launch vehicle was referred to by the placeholder name of Very Big Brother. It was stated to be a two-stage-to-orbit liquid-propellant rocket, with the launcher intended to be reusable. In early 2016, Blue Origin indicated that the first orbital launch was expected no earlier than 2020 from the Florida Launch Facility and in September 2017 continued to forecast a 2020 debut. In a February 2016 interview, Blue Origin President Rob Mayerson referred to engine development and orbital launch vehicle milestones. The vehicle itself and the high-level specifications were initially publicly unveiled in September 2016. New Glenn was described as a 7M diameter, two- or three-stage rocket, with the first and second stages being liquid methane, liquid oxygen, methalox designs using Blue Origin engines. The first stage is planned to be reusable and will land vertically, just like the New Shepard suborbital launch vehicle that has been flying suborbitally since the early 2010s. Although these plans would subsequently change, the 2016 plans called for the first stage to be powered by seven of Blue Origin's BE-4 single-shaft oxygen-rich staged combustion, liquid methane, liquid oxygen rocket engines, the second stage to be powered by a single vacuum variant of the BE-4, BE-4U, and the third stage to use a single BE-3 Hydrolox engine. In 2016, the first stage was planned to be designed to be reused for up to 100 flights. Blue Origin announced that they intended to launch the rocket from Launch Complex 36, LC-36, and manufacture the launch vehicles at a new facility to be built on nearby land in Exploration Park. Acceptance testing of the BE-4 engines was also announced to be planned for Florida. The journey began on the 10th of January, capturing the attention of space enthusiasts as a massive Blue Origin rocket booster was carefully transported to Launch Complex 36 at the Kennedy Space Center. This giant, known as New Glenn, was not just making a routine appearance, it was gearing up for a series of vital tests that could potentially reshape our cosmic capabilities. Photographer Greg Scott, armed with a keen eye and a camera, seized the opportunity to document this momentous occasion. His images and video showcased the 57-meter vehicle's transit from the Blue Origin rocket factory to the launch facility, providing a rare and captivating glimpse into the intricacies of space exploration. A closer examination of the images revealed the intriguing details, markings indicating the not-for-flight adorned sections of the forward fuselage, sparking speculation among the enthusiasts. Could this signal a need for replacement in the future, or is this booster destined for live-fire testing? The suspense adds a layer of anticipation to the unfolding narrative. However, the new Glenn's journey did not end with this first stage. Just a week after Greg's photographic expedition, Blue Origin CEO David Limp offered a tantalizing glimpse on LinkedIn. His post featured not only the imposing first stage, but also the upper stage, patiently awaiting its turn in the hangar. A strategic tableau of potential that amplifies the excitement surrounding New Glenn's mission. New Glenn is positioned as Blue Origin's heavyweight contender in the lift market. It is named after NASA astronaut John Glenn, the first American astronaut to orbit Earth. It stands at an impressive 57.5 meters tall, 
fueled by the seven Kex BE-4 engines at Stage 1. The Stage 2 is powered by two Kex BE-3U engines. Like the New Shepard suborbital launch vehicle used for space tourism activities, the New Glenn's first stage has been designed to be reusable since its inception. In 2021, the company started a program to make the second stage reusable as well, with the project code named Project Jarvis. The first test tank was created in 2021. The maiden flight of the New Glenn is slated for August 2024, aiming for the stars. This inaugural mission carries the weighty responsibility of launching NASA's Escapade Mars mission into the cosmic expanse. The audacity of NASA to trust in New Glenn is notable, considering it is a rocket that is yet to grace the skies. Blue Origins, known for its suborbital endeavors, is now venturing into the realm of heavy lift rockets, a leap that involves inherent risk. This bold move becomes even more gripping when considering the recent pause of another of the company's rockets, New Sheeper. New Sheeper faced a benching following an engine nozzle failure, leading to a harrowing launch abort in September 2022. Only in December did it take to the skies again with a successful test launch. The narrative is pregnant with the thrill of exploration and the gamble of uncharted territories. The dance between innovation and risk, as Blue Origin's New Glenn is ready for its dance with the cosmos. This is once again a testament to the courage and daring spirit of mankind, the propelling of mankind into the unknown, the thrill of the unknown. As August 2024 looms closer, the world's wait with bated breath, eager to witness the outcome of NASA's daring trust in a rocket and company that is pushing the boundaries of what is possible in our quest for interstellar exploration. NASA's confidence in a spacecraft that has never taken to the skies yet suggests undisclosed test results, sparking curiosity amongst space enthusiasts. The unveiling of flight hardware for the Blue Origin's innovative rocket eagerly taking shape at the hangar at Launch Complex 36 adds an air of anticipation. As the pieces of this shiny new spacecraft intricately come together, it paints a picture of imminent action and exploration. The meticulous assembly of New Glenn's flight components is a behind-the-scenes spectacle, a ballet of engineering and technology converging for a cosmic performance in the confines of Launch Complex 36. The birthplace of dreams, reaching for the stars, and the promise of a groundbreaking mission take tangible form. Each nut bolt and panel resonates with the potential to propel humanity deeper into the cosmos. The hangar, a vault of aerospace innovation, is the stage where the new Glenn will soon step into the spotlight. It is a glimpse into the future, a fusion of aspirations and careful craftsmanship converging to defy the gravitational bounds that have tethered us to the Earth for so long. Soon, the curtains will rise and the entire world will witness the new Glenn in action. It's not just a rocket, it's a vessel that is poised to embark on a journey that expands our cosmic footprint. Thanks for watching. While you are here, check out another interesting video by clicking on the link appearing on your screen right now.